Hi, welcome to Car and Mechanical. It has been a while. I will cover a little bit of why in this video, but there's going to be a dedicated separate video because of everything has changed over the last year or so for me. However, the video you're here for today is for the GR Yaris. So back at the start of this year, we were hearing all of the news about the new GR Yaris that Toyota were working on and that it was going to be 260 horsepower, all-wheel drive and 1,280 kilos. So apart from early press impressions and the odd video, there wasn't a lot of info apart from the fact you could place an order and that was probably until July when in the UK we were able to go out and look at some of the early prototypes. So I actually went out to see this one on the 24th of July. So this is where how things have changed for me over the last 12 to 18 months come more into focus. So within the last year or so I've bought a house. My son was born in early July and I've got rid of a number of my cars because of the house I have at the moment I can only really have three cars one in the garage one in the parking space and one out front so where the Yaris ends up coming into that is I wanted something that I could use as a daily driver that kind of did everything that some of my other project cars have been looking to do and with the power to ratio, ratio it's got I'm, I'm not going to go through all the stats and everything but it ticked the boxes of what I wanted from a car without me pouring hundreds of pounds a month into modifying something like the stage yet I just thought why don't I just get something that does it out of the box so going back to the 24th of July, I went to Stephen Eagle Toyota in Milton Keynes, had a look at a car, sat in it because I'm six foot two and I wanted to make sure that I fit in it okay, but I've been running around in an NV MX-5 for 18 months, so I pretty much expected it to be fine, and it was. I was really happy with the way the car looked and felt, just in terms of getting in it and sitting in it, couldn't drive it at that point. So I put my deposit down, I think I was the first person to get finance agreed on one as well, and then I was hopefully going to hear about a test drive in September. Uh, got pushed back to October and because of COVID heard in November that I'd be able to do it in December so this past Thursday I went and had a test drive of one so that's going to follow in a moment right so this test drive is going to be fully from the point of view of myself um, fortunately I didn't set my camera up properly so it's from a chest onwards which I quite like the view but I wish you'd seen more of the dash and uh, the things that were going on with the boost gauge and everything However, I'm going to start off with a pull up to third gear. And it got there really, really quick. not going to try and go over too much of the stuff you've seen in other people's reviews I'm just going to kind of go over it from my point of view and from the respective cars that I've had so I've obviously had the um, 1.8 NV MX-5 the Audi A4 Quattro which was a 2.5 TDI um, that had 175 horsepower it was dynoed as uh, however it was a 16 or 1700 kilo car and this is 1300 so one of the things I found really crazy was just how quickly it does get on with everything. And you can see the weather out there. The wipers were not on full, but not far off of it. The roads were wet and greasy. It didn't feel like the car knew about that. The car was just doing what it was made to do. And if I was to put it in any particular way, it was like the car was driving to a different set of rules to all the other cars on the road. So I showed up to the test in my wife's Jazz, which has got... Um, winters on it at the moment it's understeering all over the place at normal speeds and at enthusiastic speeds the Yaris just absolutely stuck you can feel all of the talk of it um, the brakes felt great they weren't too sharp they weren't too grabby uh, absolutely needed what they'd need to do which you'd expect at the size they are it, it just felt like the car was just absolutely fully composed and it was a hell of a lot of fun to drive the piped in sound isn't too bad but with mine I want to turn it off um, and I'll probably be looking at a couple of modifications so I'll probably get on to my build spec as well so when I ordered this uh, my son was two weeks old and I was concerned about having a car that was too stiff so this was pre the point everyone had done the test drives and reviews and it was coming out and the suspension was um, firm but not overly stiff and wasn't going to shake you to bits but I was quite aware of a lot of other modern performance cars recently that are way too firm and do shake it to bits so I ended up ordering the standard pack um, which I do slightly regret now having driven this because I think it would have been okay I'm probably going to miss the LSDs not overly fussed on the alloys because I'm not a massive fan of their styling um, big fan of the weight saving 
not fussed about red brake calipers or the sport suspension either because those things can be addressed. So on the test drive, I think I only had it for about 20 to 25 minutes. I could have had up to half an hour with it, but I was trying not to go too long. I noticed the longer I got into the test drive, uh, the more enthusiastic I got with it. So there was a lot of that that happened on the test drive. Um, just such a lot of fun with the car. So sort of jumping back to the things I mentioned, some of the money that I've saved uh, by not ordering the full pack, I may end up um, putting back into the car at some point by getting some alloys that I prefer stylistically, seeing what people bring out suspension wise, um, intake wise and exhaust wise. Power wise I'm quite happy with the car but if there ends up being uh, ways to push a bit more out of it we'll, we'll have a look at that as well. A couple of things I observed whilst I was driving, that view out the front is quite narrow with the mirror and the entertainment unit display. Um, I know someone moved the mirror a bit to give himself a bit more space and then when you look out the rear you hardly get any rear visibility but not that it really matters in this car. I think I mentioned before that I'm a bit over 6'2 and the seat in position was absolutely fine in terms of um, my head not touching the roof or anything but I did wish it was perhaps a little bit lower down but you get used to it pretty quickly um, but I do prefer sitting in my cars rather than the feeling of sitting on my cars. I think I end up going for another loop or two round with this in a second as well. I wish I had a third camera with me so I could perhaps get a camera on myself and I would have done some commentary but I ended up just chucking a few things in my bag in the morning and didn't have the thought to set something up for a third camera and to bring a mic with me. So one interesting thing is when you were chucking it round and round about a little bit harder it didn't slide on you but you could feel the back end unweighting a little bit so that kind of slight rotation feeling that you get with an MX-5 sometimes. I do think on longer journeys cruise control is going to be a must for this so I'll be using it for my sort of daily work commute but there might be the occasional family trip that we end up making with it as well and it's so easy to go at enthusiastic speeds that you don't realise the speed you're doing and cruise control probably does you a favour there. I think other things I comment on I'd probably echo what probably most of the journalists and other posts have already said about it in terms of feeling everything. Gear shift feels incredibly solid. The car's in incredibly comfortable and fun to drive. The only other thing I suppose I could, I would add to this is that I've, I've driven a couple of other cars, um, you know, with pretty decent power. So I've driven an R34 GTR, um, rented that for a day in Japan, um, have done track days where you get like three or four laps in a Ferrari, an Aston Martin and a 911 GT3. Those are very much kind of the sitting with an instructor and they limit from what you're doing. But this is right up there in terms of the feeling of speed. Um, obviously, probably been in cars that, that are quicker than it, but they didn't feel as quick as this thing feels. And I think for me, that's going to be the biggest thing. It's going to be a very, very fun car, but also very capable. Right, so as I go to drop this back off, it's probably worth saying that these were just sort of my initial thoughts and impressions on driving it, and it wasn't looking to be my review. I think when I get my own personal one when I've had a bit of time to uh, get used to it learn how to play with it I'll give a, a proper review that's probably going to be in January um, after everyone's had a chance to do all the sort of their reviews and everything but I think mine's going to be more around what it's like to live with and own one and as I mentioned there'll probably be things that happen to it over time um, I do want to say massive cheers to Stephen Eagle for sorting out the test drive for the car and for everything they've done with the order so far uh, massive thanks to Patrick as well so if you're Milton Keynes and you're looking at getting a GR Yaris I would give Stephen Eagle to a shout and ask for Patrick uh, he's a top guy and you know he's properly enthusiastic about these as well it's kind of good to not have what you hear as sometimes your typical dealership experience um, didn't feel any pressure from them the guy's been really helpful any questions I've asked they've sorted everything out um, so yeah, that's it just in terms of the test drive. In terms of my order, so this is the first new car I've ever bought. In fact, I don't think any of the cars I've ever owned have been within 10 years old. So this is pretty different for the things that I've had. So Toyota give you a portal and you can see how it's going. You can see that the order's being processed. You can see when it's been built. So it's quite exciting to see when my car has actually started the production process. And then you can see when it's on the ship. So currently my car is on a ship to the UK. 
it's expected here about the 16th of January. Then once it gets here, it needs some bits and pieces, some quality checks and to go through registration. And I'm hoping to pick it up by the 20th of January. And once I have it, I think that's when I'll start to do the proper videos on it and everything. Um, I'll go a bit more in depth with some of the things that I'm hoping to do. I'm going to have to run it in. I think it needs 600 miles before you can actually start to full time drive it hard. Um, whether I'm going to do the same as other people, get that first oil change within a thousand miles, change the diff oils and stuff like that, I haven't made my mind up on yet. But we shall wait and see. So that's about it for today's video, guys. If you are an older subscriber to the channel, yes, I am back with videos. More are going to be coming soon. Probably do a bit of an update on what's happened with the cars, the cars I've got cars I'm going to get rid of and eventually the position I want to be in. Uh, if it's your first time checking it out, welcome to the channel and if you want to see more videos like this in the future, hit subscribe. Any comments, feedback, please leave some in the section down below. And more than anything guys, thanks for watching.